G'day everyone, Ralph Mayhew here. What's cracking? Thanks for joining me today. I've been approached by the folks at Zona Photo Studio to give a review and, and a bit of a test drive of their photo editing software that they say is your Lightroom and Photoshop equivalent is the website. And so they've, um, they've sent me a free copy and I can say anything I want about it, so I will. I'll give you the rundown of whether you should get it and what works and what not by having a, a real um, fleshing out of what it can do, what it can't do, its limitations and so forth. And stay tuned because at the end of this video we've got some epic giveaways. Yeah, first giveaway on the channel ever. Very excited, so stick around for that. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring the bell and stick around because this is going to be fun. Now, the first challenge is that you can only use it on a Windows platform. I know, and I'm a Mac through and through, but my wife isn't, so. All right, I've jumped on Lindell's computer, I've downloaded Zona, and now I'm going to have a play on it. Now, when I first downloaded Lightroom, I didn't read any instructions or watch any videos or whatever. I just engaged with it because I assumed it would be intuitive. So that's the same way I'm going to approach this. And what we're looking for is can I learn how to do it as we go through, knowing the basics about photo editing, which I do. So I'll share the screen with you now and you can play along at home. Here's our basic get up because this is our catalog that you can see right here. We've got our sources there and the other features. So what I've decided to do is take this memory card that has on it some shots of the surf I took the other day and some sunrise as well as some headshots I did. So we'll go through and edit them and just see how the experience goes. Put some glasses on because I can't see anything without glasses these days. We are now loading up some photos and there was 2,000 photos or so on this card. Oh. <laughs> um, and in Lightroom it fires up on my computer, takes uh, around 30 to 40 seconds to load up the photos so that they can then be selected and imported to a lot longer on this. Let's select some images now. Let's select that one, and uh, that's a good one. It's pretty quick on its refreshing of images as we move up and down uh, the, the slider. That's really handy. We are gonna choose one that had some nice sun in it, like that. I think that gives us a pretty good um, range of images, uh, lights, contrasts, different textures, uh, different colors, and different themes. So if it does all right with these, then it could pretty much do all right with, with anyone that you want to go with. Create my own subfolder. I'm not going to do that yet because it's Lindell's computer and she'll kill me. Copy. Usually it's import. It's what we're doing. We're importing, which is what this is up here. However, I'm just going to go copy. And it's importing and the import is complete. And I'm going to open target folder. Let's go to the develop module. Gives us the um, stats of what it was shot on. So 100th 100, 100th per second, 2.5 aperture, ISO 400, 50 mil. But let's just go order to see what happens. And this is what Zona thinks is a pretty good coloring. And I would, I would agree. Um, so that's good that auto works because I often use that as a, as a starting place. If we go to white balance, that's not too bad actually. Oh, I don't mind that at all. Uh, just tweak that down a bit and that down a bit. All right, that's good. Do a contrast. Now you see this is really interesting. As you move, it goes blurry and you have to take your finger off for it to clarify. So you can't actually track the changes with clarity. You see that it goes blurry as I move it. I wonder if that does it with all of them. I go double click on contrast, goes to zero, that's really, really helpful. Um, it's like, oh, lights must be highlights. Yeah, it goes blurry, and you see at the front, in the top, in the middle above his head, it says processing. It's good to know you can use the same developing tools on that um, on those bars. It doesn't have texture like Lightroom does, but Zona, not too bad at all. We can go grayscale if we want. So it's a little hard to um, to preview as you go along. You can't see the full change that's being made until you take your finger off. But that's really good. So if I wanted to go black and white for this fella, I don't. Yeah, something like that. 
Ah, now if I scroll, use my scroll wheel, which I normally do to relocate myself, if I'm anywhere in the middle, it actually it changes the values on the different sliders. So I have to move outside the sliders to go up and down. Tone curve, what you want um, with most photos is an S. So with this particular photo, I'd go something like that. So you can actually, like in Photoshop, you can click on and off the, um, the masks that you have put on. And what if I go retouching brush? Let's see if I can retouch some of this. Let's see if that's a mess. Oh, I see. It's like a circular thing. And can I move that to there? It has these, these other functions built into Zona. Um, whereas in Lightroom, you have to export across to Photoshop to do it which means you have to have a subscription for both. So it's kind of handy. You can do both here. Oh, see, it takes a little bit. If I go to the next photo, oh, see all that? It's all gray and then it loads up, loads up, and then I can go. It's not instantaneous, uh, which can challenge your, your flow a little bit, your, your workflow. Let's go the saturation. And let's say we want to change his skin tone and give him a suntan. Ah, that's pretty cool. I like it. Good job. Um, and let's say, what did I go hue and change the color of his sh shirt? Would that work? Hasn't touched any of the other colors. So that's really cool. So you can use the eyedropper to pick a color, or you can just manipulate each of the colors as you see fit. They've done a pretty good job at giving a really easy to use, holistic array of tools that you should be able to do all the things that you, you might normally do from this program. If I had time, I reckon you could actually work out um, teeth whitening too. It has the ability to do things that easily that other programs are either really limited to do or are extremely complicated to do. So this makes it affordable and available, especially if you're a Windows user. In fact, only if you're a Windows user. So now let's go to a landscape image. If I'm editing this, the first thing I want to do is straighten up the horizon. So I should be able to go from there to there. Bingo, that's good. I'm going to crop it for Instagram, which is a 4-5 crop, which is not there. So I can go, um, go fix aspect and go width is 4 and height is by 5. And then I can move this around. So let's go. This guy's pretty boring. Some interesting C down here. So we might just leave it just like that and go close. And then I'm going to warm it up a bit. Not too much. I'm going to make a little bit. Ooh, no, no, I think. So one of the um, key things I like doing is to bring warmth to a particular area of an image. Um, Say, so for example, just here, as the sun comes through, you really could highlight that in a yellowy thing. But I'm not sure at all how to do that, or even if it's possible. Um, there is a brush, but again, the brush just gives me all those other things. Contrast lights, sharpening strength, but it doesn't give me clarity. It doesn't give me dehaze, and it doesn't give me a change of the white balance, so I can't make it cooler or warmer. That is quite a severe limitation. You can add presets. That's nice. So there you go. You can add your own presets. I'm sure you can make your own and then um, uh, have them at available. Yep, you go presets, you click plus and you just create a preset out of what your things are here. So that's nice and handy. How do I take a brush? Just double click brush. I do. Okay, so let's go dehaze. And it starts to bring it up. It brings it up all right. It's all right. Bit of clarity. I then probably like to lighten this area, which I would do by just going like this. And then I go to basic edits and I go to exposure, start there. Instead of like a feathering, the gradient width, which is basically the space around here and how abrupt the change is between what you're editing and what you're not editing. I really like that it puts the color graph here. And you can just choose, it tells you which spectrum that color's on. Now everything that's in your your space here gets affected. Um, if I go to luminance, 
Yeah, it's just the brightness of everything. And I go there and I want that increased in luminance. And it only does it in this section, not that section, which is really nice. Editor is the built-in Photoshop equivalent. It's what else they do. Whoa! And so you can actually work in here and you can put text in. You can probably do a number of things that you can do in Photoshop. But again, it's it's just learning a new system. So that's pretty impressive that it's, that it's right there. Oh, do you like that? It gives you a, a warning sign. There's too many whites. So there's probably, um, that means you would have to watch this. If we go to white point, we go white point here. Um, it should take away from that. And if we go that, it should take it down a little bit. So you can actually, if, if there's too many whites or too many blacks in a picture, it loses the detail. And so it loses how good the photo is, especially if you print it. So that's a good warning that it tells you, oh, too much white, so you gotta pull it out. Let's just say we like that one and we like that one. So if I go control and select, oh, that's fancy. What if I, um, what if I select some more photos? What if I go this one and this one? We've chosen four pictures. We want to export, export. So I can go save folder as I can choose where I put it. I can choose what format. I can choose what quality. Compatibility. I can rename it. That's all really good. I can put my metadata in. Um, just down here. I can choose what I do. I can sharpen. I can resize. Well, that's different. Um, oh, there you go. So you can make the size of it smaller, which is the equivalent to its resolution. Let's just jump back to the studio and have a bit of a chat. But what do you think? You got a, a run through, a bit of a tutorial. As you can see, it works really similarly to most editing softwares, as you would hope. It's fairly intuitive. It makes sense. And I think it compares with a Lightroom or a Photoshop. It's kind of the, the two in one. With Lightroom, you use Lightroom and then you export to Photoshop. And Photoshop can, can do a whole heap more, but those extra things you don't necessarily need all the time for photo editing. So I, I, I think the Zona Photo Studio has found this really nice balance that um, enables you to do everything in-house and produce and export great photos that you'd be really happy with the finished editing product. So, so that's, a, that's a big shout out, well done Zona. Now there's some challenges, there's some limitations that I think we need to discuss and be upfront about. First of all, it's a Windows platform. It doesn't work on the Mac platform. And for a lot of creatives I know, they operate on a Mac platform. So there's a big challenge there. And when I asked them about it, they said they're trying to raise enough revenue that enables them to then develop the program on a new platform. So it is it is in their sites, and it is something that you may wanna um, hang out for if you're a Mac user. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you may be super keen to jump on this. Let's talk price. Price is amazing, $49 for the year and $4.99 per month to have a subscription. That's compared to $14.99, I think, from Lightroom. The price is incomparable, so they've smashed that out of the park. So if you're looking for really quality editing software on a Windows platform, I don't think you can go wrong. Now. There's there's some other things that I need to say in this. My camera was one of the is a new camera. It's a Nikon Z6, and the newer cameras have to use the raw developing software from Adobe, brought in to Zona to enable it to work. But over 400 other cameras, here's just a list of some of them, can be used straight into the program. So if you've got a, a brand new camera or a mirrorless, a newer camera, you will have to then search and download Adobe's raw formatting. It tells you that you need to do that, and then you need to work it out how to do that. Another limitation is when you put in your memory card, it generates thumbnails. And I had 2,000 photos, and it took five minutes to generate those thumbnails that you then choose from, and then you import. So the entire importing process is, is longer 
than you would expect through Lightroom and other programs because it generates all those thumbnails and then you search through the thumbnails and then you import those thumbnails that you've selected. So something to be a little bit aware of when you use a mask. So a mask is a circular mask or a graduated filter or, or however you want to mask your photos. There's some limitations to those masks. There's no white balance. There's no dehaze. There's no clarity functions within the mask, but I'm sure in future updates that'll be taken care of. One of the biggest challenges I found is that when you move a slider, as you would have seen, you move the slider and it processes, so it all goes blurry and it processes the change and then comes clear. So you move your slider from zero to one, it processes and changes. What you actually want to do is be able to move your slider and as you move your slider, your image changes so that you can see exactly what you're getting and stop rather than guess, back guess, guess. So that's quite a, a significant limitation, but perhaps only if you're used to, um, to things being more seamless in that space. If you're a Windows user, I would strongly recommend checking out Zona. And if you're thinking, I would love, would love a free copy, well, you've come to the right channel on the right day. I have three subscriptions, three annual subscriptions that I can give away to um, anyone I want. So what I've decided to do is if you want one of these three subscriptions, what you need to do is tell me in the comments below why you think you want Zona, what benefit that would be to you. Um, I also want you to like this video, to ring the bell and to subscribe. So you do those things within the next week, within the next seven days, I will then choose which answers I like the best and I'll be in contact. Now, for those of you that maps perhaps are keen, but don't make the cut, I've got a 20% discount that I can offer everybody else uh, this week. So if you'd like to be a Zona user and you think, I don't want to go through all that, but I wouldn't mind a 20%, you can just comment 20% and, um, and I'll give you a 20% thing. But uh, it's exciting that we get to give it away. The folks at Zona have been really wonderful. They approached me out of the blue, said they enjoyed my photography and wanted to be part of it. Um, and then you can see their heart uh, that it's for creatives and photographers to become better and better. And their software reflects it, it's intuitive. I found it easy and a joy to use. And if you would like to be part of this Zona ecosystem, if you'd like to try out the software, Comment below, why do you want Zona? And otherwise, have a wonderful and amazing week. See ya.